Go ahead, Clay. Yeah, Megan Swanee's got the uh, I was installation the airlock uh, via message five. He's got that in work. But the uh, on 15 and 13 were significantly, um, I'm sorry, 14 and 16 were significantly, I guess, hotter than uh, 13 and, and uh, 15. Okay, we copy that. This is Mission Control Houston Spacewalker Jim Riley reporting that he has completed uh, the final uh, release of the launch restraints on uh, both the aft wing beta gimbal restraints and the forward wing beta gimbal restraints. It's up in the uh, TMG and not on the RTV. The RTV is all in good shape. And my uh, right hand looks just like me. Okay, JR, thanks. And Pat, Danny, H-33 winch is removed and the fit pin has been reinstalled. Okay, great. These uh, beta gimbal assemblies are the structural link between the truss's integrated electronics and the solar array wing blankets. Meanwhile, Daniel Levis uh, successfully moving through his uh, tasks of uh, removing uh, Uncinching and unwinching uh, the radiator restraints. He mentioned that uh, one of the restraints was uh, a little bit tougher to remove than the others. How are you doing, JR? How are you doing? Good. 
Those spe spacewalkers checking the condition of their gloves after each major task is complete to, to look for any possibility that there was a cut uh, due to uh, Robert Kerbeam's experience on uh, the previous shuttle mission uh, that was involved with uh, installing the uh, opposite side solar array truss structure. Just as an extra safety precaution, the spacewalkers have been asked to report the condition of their gloves after each task. Okay, so for both of you, we are still in the ratchet wrench. Danny, you can finish your last uh, winch bar, and then uh, we'll end up sending you both out for the uh, saw bunch dose. Copy that. Copy that. So Jim Riley wrapped up with his uh, tasks associated with the beta gimbal assemblies. He's going to be moving over as Danny Olivas finishes his task of uh, uncinching the uh, radiator. Re the radiator restraints, and they'll both uh, move over and begin unstowing the uh, forward and aft solar array wings. Once you have that pit pin reinstalled, uh, I'd like for you to inspect your gloves. Okay, I can do that. This is Mission Control Houston. It appears that Danny Levis is done uh, removing the uh, eight restraints uh, on the uh, radiators. 
associated with the installation of this uh, set of solar arrays and uh, the associated radiators that will be used to uh, right. get rid of excess heat from inside the station. Mass tip for 3A. Okay, I just want to remind you both of the warning that uh, the pinch pin pinch point, please put the fitting and lockout arm during the stop rotation. Okay, Pat, and I want to give you an update here on my gloves. They uh, still just a little bit of uh, stain from the, the brake coats. No cuts of the, um, in the RTV and the rest of the gloves. They look good. Great, Danny, thanks. Okay, and the pit pin or the right blanket box is out. Copy. Time to get into position. Well, they are it's dark. <laughs> yeah. For 17 more minutes. Okay. Good pin for the left one is out. And this is Mission Control Houston. The two spacewalkers have now translated up to the top of the mass canister that uh, holds the canister that will deploy the solar arrays. They've started uh, removing uh, the pit pins from the lockout arm on that canister. Atlanta, Houston, air to ground two for the PWC. We're now two hours, 40 minutes into the spacewalk as the shuttle station complex orbits 211 miles over the uh, Indian Ocean just off the coast of Saudi Arabia and Africa. SCJ, uh, we'll take the terminate here okay, in uh, one minute. the locking sleeves over the joint. It is. It is. Going for the pit pin. Happy. Pit pin's installed. Pit pin's installed. Going for the left, Lanky Fox. Going for the right. Okay, Danny, you ready? Stand by. Ready. Okay, here we go. Okay, right one's locked. Left one's locked on 3A. Going up the pit pin. Well, the pit pin is in. Jim Riley's scheduled to be unstowing the forward solar array blanket box while Daniel Levis unstows the aft box. This is the final step in preparing the solar arrays for deployment tomorrow. It sure look good from here. <laughs> okay, next we gotta go after the mass tip fasteners. Yes, sir. Hey, okay, Pat, are ready for the speech key settings? Okay, for both of the FJRs ready also. Yep. Alpha 7. Alpha 7. Set. Counter 2. Counter 2 set. 30 decimal 5. And uh, it's 14 turns. And we want to verify they're popped up and get a little video of each. 30 decimal 5, 14 turns. Looking for pop up. Here's a good view of the two spacewalkers as they are at the very end of the mast canister. Yeah, stand by. I'm having to call my PGT here. I hit the off switch inadvertently. Okay. Alpha 7. Alpha 7. Doctor 2. 
counter to 14 turns. Roger that. Okay, track is number three. Got that on WVS. That looks good right there. This is a view of uh, J.R. Riley. So he works at the very end of that mass canister. Process of releasing the mast tip fasteners. There are three of those. He'll be using his pistol grip tool to turn each one of them about 14 turns. for EVA, Pat. Yeah, Megan, you may have called and I just uh, forgot. I was wondering where we stood with the uh, jettison and the covers at the and ECU. Pat, we hadn't called you on that yet. We are still waiting another five minutes or so for the ECU covers. Uh, we are go for the SSU covers at this time. SSU covers, or you can uh, reposition that to crew lock bag. And uh, once JR gets his TA clamps going in, we're going to send him over to start on the uh, DLA-2. Copy that. If you're okay with that, I'd like to go ahead and uh, go get the crew lock bag first and get that relocated. Then come back and pick up the uh, and SSU covers all three together. That'd be great. We're just a few minutes away from uh, sunrise, and maybe we can get some of that uh, on tape. Copy. 
This is Mission Control Houston now two hours and 48 minutes into the spacewalk by Danny Olivas and Jim Riley. Pat Forrester inside the uh, space shuttle relaying to the two spacewalkers that they do have a go now to go ahead and uh, jettison uh, the two sequential shunt unit covers. These are uh, some of the thermal shrouds. And three T clamps are complete on the other one. Copy, JR. There are some additional shrouds on the uh, electronics and environmental control units, uh, but uh, they're still waiting to give a go-ahead for those to be re re removed. Jim Riley's uh, next task scheduled to be uh, preparing the uh, solar array rotary joint for activation by installing two of four drive lock assemblies, or DLAs. The others will be installed on the second spacewalk of the mission Atlantis, Houston, coming up on Wednesday. Go ahead, Houston, for EBA. Pat, you have a go now for ECU covers. Copy, Megan, thanks. And Megan MacArthur relaying the word that uh, the spacewalkers are go to also get rid of those electronics uh, and environmental control unit covers as well. Did not copy the number three RTAS. Um, wondering if you got that or if that's still on the get ahead list. No, we got it. Uh, matter of fact, uh, he had done three and I called him and he was just getting ready to do uh, number three. And so all four are complete. Copy that. Thanks. Danny, I picked up the Kulak bag and I'm going to go ahead, go ahead and drop it off at the handrail. Can you say it again a little, please? Yeah, that's uh, S3 handrail 3049. It's on phase four, Danny. Okay, 3049. Thank you. Danny, crew back and I'll throw it on handrail 3049. Copy, Danny. I guess you heard we now have to go for all the covers, so you can uh, set yourself up for that. Okay, heading out there.
Peace Atlanta, Sarah to ground two, free come. Go ahead, CJ. Ready to uh, do the N2 press uh, using a payload N2 valves if you're ready for that. That's one through five. Let's see it. Good call, JR. About two minutes. Okay, CJ, uh, we're ready for it as well. We do have to get the Timbu on board, so give us just a minute and then you have a go. Thanks a lot. Atlantis and ISS, Houston for calm. We're expecting about 13 minutes of ratty calm starting in 30 seconds. Atlantis, copy. This is Mission Control Houston. Uh, we're in some uh, poor communication with both the shuttle and the station right now. Uh, we should be regaining good comm uh, here in uh, a few minutes. Uh, while we don't have good communication with the uh, crew aboard the shuttle station complex and the two spacewalkers, Daniel Levis and Jim Riley, outside the space station, good time to uh, give you an update on our TV schedule for tonight. Uh, we're adding an event to the TV schedule tonight at uh, 7 p.m. Central Time. That will be a post-mission management team briefing featuring mission management team chair John Shannon. Again, that briefing coming up at 7 p.m. Central Time, 8 p.m. Eastern, uh, with news from today's mission management team, which has been reviewing uh, the status of all assets of this mission of Atlantis to the International Space Station. For the N2 repress. Danny, ready for us to see Jettison for 3A. Okay, Danny, uh, just remember we're looking for a retrograde Jettison, and if you'll report the speed and direction. Okay. Ready, ready, mark. It's going about uh, 10 degrees off the V bar, about 10 degrees outboard, and velocity of about 5 foot per second. in the WDS right now. That's really cool. So it is a moment. That's incredible. Copy, Danny, and could you just tell me again which cover that was? That was the SSU cover for 3 Alpha.
Danny. Thirty for ECU Jettison. ECU cover Jettison. We're ready. Okay. In three, two, one, mark. Okay, it's about uh, ten degrees below the V bar, and about uh, five degrees out. Velocity is about six foot per second. And we copy, thanks, Danny. Okay, going over to 1A. And JR, did I miss your call? Uh, no, sir, I just uh, was waiting, but I am finishing up the swing bolts on the DLA cover. Okay, after that, I want to remind you to go ahead and reposition your tethers. Yep, they're already done. Great. This is Mission Control Houston. Uh, we're now just over three hours into the spacewalk by Danny Ovalivas and Jim Riley. We're in a period where we don't have very good communication through the various antenna systems that are connecting us to the shuttle station complex. Spacewalkers, uh, at last report, were in the process of uh, beginning to uh, remove the multi-layer insulation uh, of uh, covers associated with the sequential shunt units and the electronics and environmental control units associated with the solar arrays. Hey, Pat, Danny. Go ahead. I'm now ready for the SSU Jettison for 1A. Houston air to ground two for the N2 repress. Go ahead, Kevin. Okay, yeah, sorry, we're a little ratty right now. Um, just wanted to let you know you have a go for steps one through six uh, completely. When you get to step five, uh, before you uh, throw those valves there, could you let us know the configuration they were in before you did it? And uh, you have a go just to take the action there, though. Okay, I'll do that. I'll do one through six, and I'll call you back with the uh, how they were in step five. Here we go.
Just a reminder on these bolts to uh, limit the turn count. That'll be nine. Four. Minimize the side loading on the bolt heads and to maintain an axial force. This is Mission Control, Houston, three hours and eight minutes into the spacewalk. Uh, Danny Olivas, one of the spacewalkers, uh, just having jettisoned one of those uh, cover thermal covers for the uh, sequential shunt units and the uh, electronics environmental control units. While uh, his counterpart, J.R. Riley, uh, continues to work on another one of the covers. Meanwhile, uh, Commander Rick Sturko uh, on board the space shuttle uh, is in the process of uh, initiating a nitrogen uh, repressurization of the shuttle station stack using shuttle nitrogen supplies, maintaining the proper atmospheric pressure inside the complex. And CJ, go ahead. Uh, we're still on a ready comp period. Okay, the uh, configuration in step five was uh, system one was open and system two is closed. And there was a uh, error yesterday on uh, when when I uh, closed out that 
procedure on step eight. I took them both to open, and then they called us up this morning and corrected that. One open, two closed. Okay, CJ, uh, we got that all. Thanks for the report. Okay, Pat, you ready for DLA off? Okay, nice job. First thing will be the uh, draw bolts. Okay, stand by. Let me get into the APFR. Jay Rally about ready to move over and begin uh, with the drive latch assembly work, while Daniel Levis moves over to uh, work with the uh, rigidizing of four alpha joint interface structure struts, known as Aegis struts. These must be rigidized uh, to make sure that the structural loading uh, can occur before uh, removing any of the launch locks later on in this upcoming spacewalk. Here's another view with the two spacewalkers down the length of the uh, newly arrived S3, S4 truss structure with the solar array blanket boxes there uh, protruding at the very bottom of your screen and the mass canister okay, perpendicular to those uh, solar array boxes. Okay, all right, Alpha 3. Danny will leave us on the left side of the truss as uh, our perspective offers us here and Jim Riley on the right side. Alpha 3 is set. Clockwise two. Clockwise two is set. You can check thirty decimal five. Check. This will be bolt one, Charlie. It should be on your left. Two turns. Okay. One, Charlie. Two turns. Alpha 3, clockwise 2. That is correct. Good read back. Uh, looks like we may have to increase the torque on this one, Pat. Okay, stand by. And Pat, Danny, while you're thinking about that, Question about Aegis trucks? Go ahead, Danny. Yeah, do you want to just go ahead and give me the PGT settings and uh, that way I can work without bothering you guys? You bet. It's Bravo 2. Bravo 2 is set. Clockwise 3. Clockwise 3. It'll be 39 turns to torque. 39 turns to torque. Okay, JR, here's the DLA draw bolt one, Charlie. Okay. We're going to try Bravo 7. Bravo 7. Set. Clockwise 1. Clockwise 1. 30 decimal 5. 30 decimal 5. And we'd like to do just one turn uh, here. Okay. Yeah, that did it. There's one turn. Okay, just uh, stand by. Break uh, Houston Atlantis for EVA. Go ahead for EVA Atlantis. Yeah, Megan, you've probably been following. I'm not sure about the comm. Uh, we had no joy on bolt one, Charlie, with the uh, settings in the procedure. So uh, on page 16-8, uh, block 57, we did one turn with the new settings. Uh, obviously, we have one turn to go.
Okay, Megan, I think uh, really uh, the way I would, uh, that's the end of the crib sheet. I think they only wanted us to put one turn on it. Probably the question is, do we go back to the original settings for the uh, second turn? And Pat, you understood better than I did. You are correct. Okay, that's what we'll do. JR, new settings? Two. Alpha, three. Alpha three. Clockwise two. Alpha three, Pat. That's right. Clockwise two. Clockwise two is set. Okay, this is still boat one, Charlie, but one turn. Okay. There's one turn. Okay, new settings. Okay. Still alpha three. Good news. That worked? Yep. Okay, new settings. Ready? Alpha 6. Alpha 6. Counter 2. Counter 2 is set. Check 30 decimal 5. Check. Okay, this is both 1A and 2A. Each one of them, 6 turns. Same okay. settings. So 1A and 2A, 6 turns. This is Mission Control Houston. Uh, Jim Riley in the process of moving from uh, one set of bolts to the others. He's uh, released the drive latch assembly lock bolts uh, and uh, now is moving on to actually removing the launch restraint bolts. These uh, drive lock assemblies uh, need to be uh, installed in order to enable solar array rotary joint activation. Two more drive lock assemblies are going to be installed on the second spacewalk of the space of the mission that's coming up on Wednesday. 
So far, three hours, 20 minutes into this spacewalk. The true extravehicular crew members uh, making good time on their uh, tasks. At last word, about 40 minutes ahead of their EVA timeline. Today's spacewalk started at 3.02 p.m. Central Time, a little bit later than had been planned due to some uh, loss of attitude control associated with uh, oversaturation of the control moment gyroscopes that uh, are used by the space station to maintain its orientation in space. Okay, JR, new settings. Okay. Once the uh, folks in the International Space Station flight control room had had a chance to uh, desaturate those CMGs and uh, get uh, the space station back in attitude control. Uh, the spacewalkers given the go ahead to uh, exit the Quest airlock module hatch and begin uh, work on their EVA tasks. Alpha three, counter one. All four of the uh, bolts that provided preliminary attachment of the new S3, S4 truss assembly to the existing truss assembly uh, locked very tightly before they open the hatches. Okay, Pat. Got uh, 34 turns and torque of. Hard to see it with that sun. Like 4.6. Sound like good numbers, JR. Have new settings. Ready? Alpha 3. Alpha 3. Clockwise 1. Clockwise 1. And this will be both 2 Bravo, 5 eighths of a turn of the hard stop, and you'll see that follower arm. By the way, you should feel that thing uh, that it contacted the race ring on that last thing. It did. Great. So this is both 2 Bravo. Okay. That's 2 Bravo.
that it had uh, contacted one of the structural members and stopped short. But I freed it up, and it's now 90 degrees rotated. It okay, sounds good. Looks like you just uh, gave a little more push inward. Yep, that's what it was. Okay, I have new settings. Stand by. This is Mission Control Houston with a view from the helmet camera of uh, Jim Riley as he continues to work with the repositioning of the drive latch assemblies. He's in the process of rotating the follow arms that will be used by that assembly. This is the third of three bolts that he's going to be uh, rotating as a part of this procedure. Today's spacewalk uh, now almost three and a half hours in length. Okay, Pat, got 32, almost 33 turns and 4.6 on the torque. Okay. Got new settings. Ready? Bravo 4. Shuttle Station Complex currently orbiting 206 statute miles over the Pacific, about to cross over the equator on, uh, on northeasterly track, headed toward the western coast of Mexico and a pass overhead of the United States.
Okay, Danny, uh, how about an update? Okay, Pat, they just struck uh, three and four are complete. Uh, the restraint for Aegis Trud number three is in the bag, and I have four presently with me, and I'm on work site for number one. And as far as uh, torsion turns, Aegis Trud number three went on with uh, 39 turns to torque. Aegis Trud number four went on with 37 turns to torque. We copy. have a few minutes if you want to go after the uh, other Aegis trucks. Okay, I'm just going to take a minute here and warm up my feet. Sounds like a plan. Great job on the DLA. Thanks. Also, just a reminder for the anti-rotation tabs and the ground wire to be out of the uh, cups. Yes, sir. Houston on the big loop for EDA. Go ahead, Houston for EDA. Pat, you have a go to inspect the DLA and reinstall the cover. Okay, we'll put that in work uh, in just a few minutes, Megan. This is Mission Control Houston. I'll look through the uh, truss structure. 
from Daniel Levis's helmet camera at uh, J.R. Riley on the other side. Jim Riley having completed the uh, deployment of uh, drive latch assembly number two. And now he'll begin uh, reinstalling the cover on the outside of that drive latch assembly. Hey, uh, if you want to just leave that eight just trained, um, I can take care of putting it away. What's that? Okay. okay. If you just want to let it sit up there. Yep, that was my plan. That's what I would do. No problem. I'll take care of it. Okay. Meanwhile, Danny Olivas uh, finishing up his work with the Alpha Joint Interface Structure, or Aegis Struts, removing those struts and putting them into a bag. That will uh, rigidize the, the Aegis Struts to assist with the structural loading before uh, the removal of uh, launch locks a little bit later on the spacewalk. We're now uh, three minutes, three hours, 38 minutes into this uh, spacewalk by Danny Olivas and uh, Jim Riley. And a reminder that coming up at the top of the hour, we're going to have a post-mission management team briefing with uh, mission management team chair John Shannon of the Space Shuttle Program. Since it's likely that the spacewalk will be continuing at that time, uh, we're going to uh, split the television coverage and on the media channel of NASA television, uh, conduct that news briefing with John Shannon, while on the public channel of NASA TV, we'll continue coverage of the spacewalk. Again, that's all coming up at 7 p.m. Central Time. Guys, about an hour ahead on the EVA timeline. Great work. Um, since you got out the door about an hour behind, uh, you can come in on time if you would like, or we'll offer up the Sarge brace beams as a get-ahead task or take any suggestions you might have. Okay, Megan, thanks. Uh, we were just discussing some of that. Let us uh, finish that. We'll get back with you. We'll be here also to let you know we're targeting 0030 GMT for the radiator deploy. Wake up. And from the International Space Station Flight Control Room, where uh, Kelly Beck and her team are following the activities of the spacewalk, Keith Johnson, the uh, space uh, walking officer in charge of the activities there. Megan MacArthur relaying to the uh, crew on board, talking with Pat Forrester uh, about the uh, ongoing spacewalk, indicating that it looks uh, to the folks on the ground as if they're about one hour ahead of the EVA timeline or schedule. Uh, even though that the spacewalkers went out uh, an hour later than had been planned, which pretty much makes up all that time. Yep, I agree. They're asking the crew whether or not they would like to go ahead and come in on time at the scheduled end of this spacewalk, even though it started a little bit late, or whether we would like to go ahead with one of the get-ahead tasks available to them.
Also, uh, Megan MacArthur letting the crew on the station and shuttle know that uh, they're targeting a deployment of the uh, radiator panels on this uh, that have been uh, loosened by the spacewalkers in about 45 minutes from now. Okay, great. Uh, make sure you get the thermal booty back on. Yes, sir. Danny, all the agents restraints are now towed. Okay, great, Danny, and you can confirm the thermal booties on each of the uh, ones you did? Yep, there's uh, three. I'll be going right by number four, and I'll pass by one to double check. Okay, then the last thing you can do is inspect your gloves. If you can get uh, a little closer now and then come right there, that looks good right there. How's it look to you visually?
Swanee, we copy that. We have a plan for radiator deploy whenever you guys have a moment to copy. Yeah, hold it down a little bit. Yeah, let me see here. Let me just go on a real quick second here. That's kind of at an angle. Cost a little bit. He's come towards me a little bit. This is Mission Control Houston, Spacewalkers Jim Riley and Daniel Levis in the process of uh, installing the uh, drive latch assembly covers, uh, driving in the uh, bolts that will hold it secure. Daniel Levis having a little bit of trouble getting his uh, engaged, although Jim Riley has uh, both of his bolts latched in. Yeah, I'm going to hold it here and you drive it in. How's that sound? Okay. Reminder that uh, coming up at the top of the hour, we're going to have a post mission management team briefing featuring uh, mission management team chair John Shannon of the Space Shuttle Program. Again, that briefing will kick off at 7 p.m. Central Time on NASA Television's media channel. We will continue coverage of this spacewalk on NASA Television's public channel while that briefing continues. It's all lined up. 
lined up. Just drive it on in. Uh, just need to get down there. And the two spacewalkers uh, about an hour ahead of their spacewalking timeline, although they did step outside the hatch an hour late due to some trouble with the control moment gyroscopes being s saturated and losing temporarily the uh, capability to control the attitude of the space station stack using those control moment gyroscopes. After mission control was able to restore attitude control through the control moment gyros, the spacewalkers given the go-ahead to open the hatch and step outside at 3.02 p.m. Central Time, working their way through all the tasks to uh, install the S3, S4 truss structure, uh, releasing uh, launch bolts and making sure that the radiators were already deployed. And now in the process of taking care of two of four drive latch assemblies, drive lock assemblies that uh, will uh, help prepare for the uh, activation of the solar array rotary joint that will allow the solar arrays, once they're deployed, to track the sun. Two more of those uh, drive lock assemblies are scheduled to be installed on uh, spacewalk number two on Wednesday. That spacewalk will be by Pat Forrester and Steve Swanson. You know what, um, it's the tool up a little bit, see if you can kind of come more normal to it. But bring the bottom, bottom PGT down. Actually, it's on, it's on, just keep on driving, it's on. Is it? Yeah, I see it now, it's on, just keep on driving. The two spacewalkers uh, working carefully side by side to make sure that all of the insulating covers are insta installed on the uh, drive lock assembly. Here directly behind them, you can see the two uh, solar array wing assemblies, one on either side of the truss structure, partially ready for deployment later on in the mission. And the radiator boxes those panels uh, directly behind Olivas and Riley. Forward, 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 right there. There it is. There Which are scheduled to be deployed in about half an hour if uh, all continues to go well with the spacewalk. Team in the space station control room uh, waiting until uh, we have another sunrise on orbit to uh, deploy those radiators. The radiators used to reject excess heat from the space station complex. That heat tends to collect due to uh, the electronics that are operating in board using uh, the electricity from the solar rays, as well as the uh, body temperatures uh, of the and other activities associated with crew work. So not only do you need to deploy these solar arrays uh, to generate the electricity, you also have to be able to get rid of the excess heat that, that is generated by the equipment that uses that electricity. Go ahead, Pat, Danny. Go ahead. Do you want me to go and start working on the launch box? I do, Danny. That's where we're at right now. Uh, I think we're taking a glove inspection from both of you since you've been working on that cover. Okay. All four of those bolts are in front. Okay, JR, I want to make sure you uh, put up any that you had on that cover. Yeah, I will. Thanks for the heads up. No, no change for the gloves. Great, Danny, thanks. Yes, 
Okay, I'm going to release the rest on this side so it'll go back over okay, on this side. Thank you. Okay, no changes to my gloves either, Pat. Looks like we've got tons of it coming. And you do. Atlantis Houston on the big loop for EVA. Go ahead, Houston, for EVA. Pat, we heard uh, Danny's comments earlier about how the PGT was powering off at high torque. We don't expect it to do that, and so we're wondering if maybe it has a low battery volts. We're wondering if Danny uh, can check that for us at a convenient time. Okay, we'll do that uh, before we get started on the first cover. Thanks. And break, uh, Danny, did you copy? I did copy. We'll let you get in position for that cover and then we'll take a look at it. Okay, uh, the leading battery faults are, looks like 3693. Houston copy, thanks. Okay, Pat, Danny. So now with cover 18, I have two reps on the cover, and I'm ready for swing ball PGT settings. Okay, the swing balls are Alpha 1. Alpha 1 is set. Alpha 3. Counter 3 set. Check 30 decimal 5, and it's 10 to 11 turns, and you want to make sure they swing open. 30 decimal 5, 10 to 11 turns. That's going to work. Okay, Pat, how 
Dominic, cover 21, and I got the same setting. Okay, thanks. Swing bolts on cover 21 are done, sir. Okay, I have your new settings. Yeah, I'm going to go do the swing bolts up through, let's see, cover 22, 1, 2, to 3 and 4. That is correct. Okay, I'm going to do all those and then come back down. Sounds good. This is Mission Control Houston, uh, Danny Olivas and uh, J.R. Riley working on the uh, securing the thermal cover on the second of the drive lock assemblies uh, that has been uh, prepared for okay. solar array rotary joint activation so far today. Delta six is set. Counter three. Counter three is set. 30 decimal five. 30 decimal five. And this would be nine turns. We nine want to limit the turn count, minimize the side loadings, and maintain the actual force. And if you don't get it with nine turns, uh, we'll do one more turn. Copy that. That's in work. Once uh, this uh, final uh, drive lock assembly cover is installed, the two spacewalkers will uh, move over for their final scheduled task of the spacewalk. That will be to uh, work together on the on the launch locks for the solar ray rotary joint. A total of uh, 16 launch locks and 10 outer launch restraints that will need to be released. These uh, locks and uh, restraints uh, constrain the solar array rotary joint and uh, handle the uh, loads and vibrations during launch. 
all of the launch locks must be uh, removed before they can move on to removing the launch restraints. Each one is under an insulation cover that uh, is connected to the solar ray rotor joint inboard bulkhead by uh, four to six bolts. It's also connected to the outboard bulkhead by uh, three spring-loaded clamp bolts. Two will uh, remove the cover and then uh, remove the launch lock by releasing four bolts. And once the launch lock is removed, they'll replace the cover, reattaching it to the solar array rotary joint inboard bulkhead, and then the outboard spring clamp bolts will be left open. Okay, Pat, and the, the uh, cover is also released. Can I go ahead and get the PGT settings for the cover, uh, sorry, for the launch lock? You bet. It's Bravo 7. Bravo 7. Counter 3. Counter 3. 30 decimal 5, and it'll be 13 to 15 turns, and make sure you have a tether on it. 30 decimal 5. So 13 to 15 turns? That is correct. Okay, I'll get a tether on it. Thank you. This is Mission Control Houston. Uh, today's spacewalk so far, four hours and 11 minutes in length. The uh, Space Shuttle Space Station Complex orbiting 210 miles uh, in altitude over the uh, eastern coast of Africa on a southeasterly swing. Uh, as soon as uh, the uh, Shuttle Station Complex reaches uh, sunrise again, which is coming up at about 15 minutes, they'll be uh, preparing to, in the International Space Station flight control room, to uh, deploy uh, those uh, radiators that will reject heat from the International Space Station following the uh, spacewalkers releasing their uh, launch locks that held them in place. A reminder that uh, as we continue coverage of this spacewalk on the uh, NASA television public channel, over on the NASA TV media channel, John Shannon, the uh, chair of the mission management team for the space shuttle program, is in the process of uh, going through a briefing on the latest status of the mission, uh, indicating that uh, they've gone ahead and decided to increase the duration of the flight by two days and providing details about the reasoning behind that extension to the length of the flight. 
you have access to the uh, digital NASA television media channel, uh, you can find John Shannon explaining the flight extension at this time. Some bolts are complete on covers 21, 22, 1, 2, 3, and 4, Pat. Copy that, JR. You're going to start with the uh, launch lock on cover 4. That's uh, probably
Danny, the cover bolts, or cover 18, are now secure. Spring bolts are released. They have a launch lock. I'm going to go drop it off. Copy. Nice job, Danny. This is Mission Control Houston. Uh, today's spacewalk now four hours, 19 minutes in length as uh, J.R. Riley and Daniel Levis uh, in the process of removing covers that will allow them access to the solar array rotary joint launch locks. Okay, J.R., they are uh, Alpha 6. Alpha 6. Counter 3. Counter 3. Check 30 decimal 5 in JR. It's nine turns and a reminder of the cautions. Roger.
driving through a launch like that. Okay, Jay, I think I heard uh, that you need settings for the uh, launch lock. That's affirmative. Bravo 7. Bravo 7. Counter 3. Counter 3. 13 to 15 turns. Okay, thank you. And I have a red. Thank you. ISS and Atlantis on one and two regarding radiator deploy. Atlantis listening. We show sunrise in about three minutes. When you're ready and exercise has stopped, we are go for you to perform step six of the radiator deploy procedure. The big loop ISS copy step six as soon as we get sunrise. Copy and when exercise is stopped. Thanks. ISS copies. Thank you. Atlantis copies. Copy all. Thanks. What's that, Danny? Go ahead, Danny. I'm ready for those PGT settings for the swing bolts on Kerbal 19. Alpha 1. Alpha 1 is set. Counter 3. Counter 3 set. 30 decimal 5, and it will be 10 to 11 turns. Verify the fastener swings open. 30 decimal 5, 10 to 11 turns. Copy that. Okay, Pat, the swing bolts on cover 19 are complete and ready for the PGT settings for the cover bolt. Alpha 6. Alpha 6 is set. Counter 3. Counter 3 is set. Nine turns and a reminder of the cautions. Nine turns, copy that. And for uh, reinstall the cover pack is Alpha 1. Alpha 1. Clockwise 2. Clockwise 2. Okay, thank you. And sunrise is coming. Thank you. Thank you.
Atlantis Houston for EVA. Go ahead, Houston for EVA. Atlantis, we're watching from down here. It's a great picture, and uh, we just want to make sure uh, that Danny is aware of the radiator deploy. Um, we see him in that region. And thanks for that, Megan. Uh, we were just talking to the station about that. We're going to get a heads up. Uh, we'll get Danny clear. Thanks a lot. Okay, thank you, guys. It's like you're still pretty clear, but I appreciate the heads up on that. And Pat, Danny, I'm ready for the launch lock release EGT settings. Bravo 7. Bravo 7 set. Counter 3. This is Mission Control Houston, now four hours, 30 minutes into today's spacewalk by uh, Jim Riley and Danny Olivas as they are working through the solar array rotary joint launch lock procedures, setting their pistol grip tools, which are essentially our cordless drills attached to uh, attached to socket wrenches that are used uh, in the installation and release of these various uh, mechanisms associated with the S3, S4 truss structure installation and uh, preparations for deployment. The team on the ground in the International Space Station flight control room has given the uh, team on the space station a go to begin the steps to uh, deploy the radiators that are part of this uh, solar rage system. Those radiators are the uh, folded flat panels that are directly behind Danny Olivas in this downlink television picture. Now that the uh, space station space shuttle complex uh, has uh, moved out into sunlight after uh, uh, daybreak just a few minutes ago, over the uh, southern Indian Ocean just to the uh, west of Australia, crew on board is getting ready to uh, initiate the commands that will begin deployment of these radiators. Again, these radiators uh, are needed to uh, reject excess heat from the International Space Station. Anytime you generate power for through the solar rays and use that in electronic equipment aboard the space station, uh, it also generates heat and uh, the excess heat needs to be removed from the space station. That's what these radiators will do once they're deployed and activated. Megan MacArthur voicing up to the uh, shuttle crew uh, following along with the EVA uh, that they wanted to make sure that Danny Olivas' feet were out of the way uh, before the team inside the space station begins deployment of the radiator. Danny. Go ahead. Uh, just to let you know that um, by releasing one of the fasteners, my PGT got the uh, bayonet fitting got hung up on one of these supports and kind of bound it up. I was able to pull it out and just wanted to make sure that you guys are aware of that. Okay, and the launch restraint, it looks like? Uh, yeah, and the launch restraint. But it did come out and there's no damage to it. I felt like it was binding up in there when I went to, to try and take it out to get another reposition on it. It was bound up on the, uh, the bayonet fitting. I don't see any any sharp metal or anything like that. It looks pretty clean. Okay, Danny, that looks like the bayonet fitting that you use when you stow it in your uh, on the swing arm. So you can next time you do that, make sure it slides in there smoothly and you're able to uh, you know close the slide on it. Copy that, and I uh, just wanted you to know there doesn't appear to be any purge or anything on it, so I just wanted to make you aware of it. Okay, great, thanks. Again, the uh, PGT settings for the, the launch restraint, the launch lock, I'm sorry. 
Okay, I understand you want the settings for the launch lock again? Yes, please. Okay, it's Bravo 7. Bravo 7 set. Counter 3. Counter 3 is set. Okay, it's 13 to 15 turns. Okay, 13 to 15 turns, copy that. And Danny, uh, we're getting ready to deploy the radiator. Looks like you're clear. We just want you to be aware and uh, just to make sure your feet stay clear. Appreciate the heads up. I'll get myself uh, another local tether here. Try to keep myself clear of the bat. Okay. And it's worth taking a look at. Houston ISS from the Big Loop. Exercise is stopped. Looks like the EV team's ready, and we are also ready for the PVR deploy. We'll put step six in work if you're ready for that. Swanee, we're ready for that. In work. This is Mission Control Houston. Uh, welcome back to coverage of the uh, spacewalk that's going on now with uh, Jim Riley and Danny Olivas outside the International Space Station. We're watching live television pictures from the station as the uh, newly installed and released radiator panels are being deployed by uh, commands from inside the space station. I wish you guys could be Megan MacArthur uh, voicing up to uh, Danny Olivas a warning to get his feet out of the way as uh, the deployment uh, was ready to begin. Here's a look at uh, Kelly Beck, uh, the flight director in charge of the International Space Station flight control team, flanked by uh, Ron West, another flight director on her left, and Megan MacArthur and Joe Tanner on the right, following the proceeds of this spacewalk. We're now uh, four hours, 38 minutes into today's spacewalk. Riley and Olivas have uh, completed the majority of their tasks uh, on, the sp on the planned spacewalk. Uh, going out the door a little bit late due to uh, difficulty with the control mobile gyroscopes becoming saturated due to all the arm movements with the large truss structure. But they have made up that time. Uh, they were about an hour ahead of their EVA timeline. And uh, the team on the ground working with the crew on orbit is uh, considering the possibility of whether any get ahead tasks are in the offing for the two spacewalkers.
This is Mission Control Houston. Uh, here is a view of the deployed radiator on the S3, S4 truss structure. One of the first elements of the uh, new appendage for the International Space Station to be deployed. This uh, deployment uh, beginning at uh, 7.40 p.m. Central Time as spacewalkers Jim Riley and Daniel Levis completed, continued with their work to uh, remove the launch locks on the solar array rotator joint that will allow this uh, new solar array, uh, set of solar arrays to rotate and track the sun. Deployment of the radiators occurring uh, over the uh, Indian Ocean uh, just south of Australia. Houston ISS Big Loop, we show step six completed. We do have a good positive PVR stop indication. Per we copy.
And this is Mission Control Houston. That uh, call from uh, Pilot Lee Archambault on uh, the shuttle station complex confirming that uh, they have an all stop on the uh, radiator deployment mechanism. It is fully, uh, fully deployed at this point. Meanwhile, Jim Riley and Danny Olivas continue on their uh, launch lock removal tasks associated with uh, getting the solar array rotary joint ready to uh, rotate. So far, the spacewalk, four hours and 47 minutes in duration. Go ahead, CJ. Hey, Kevin, now we just wanted to sync up our PET clock with you. Uh, what are you showing exactly on your big board? We're just passing uh, 49, 35, 36, 37. I'm sorry, that was uh, 04, 49, now 45. Okay, uh, 0449, thanks a lot. You bet, CJ, and we are done with the card in the KFX machine again. If you have another one to put in there, we'll take it at any time. Okay, we'll get on that.
Thanks, buddy. No problem. Hopefully a few of those will come out. Danny. Go ahead, Danny. I guess at this point we're looking at doing some swing bolts? That's correct. Okay, I'm going to start with cover 17. That's correct, and I've got settings for you. I'm ready for them. Alpha 1. Alpha 1 set. Counter 3. Counter 3 set. And it'll be 10 to 11 turns, verify the faster swing open. 10 to 11 turns, here we come. Go ahead, Atlantis. Yeah, Megan, uh, I wanted uh, JR to get in on this discussion, too, and he's uh, at a good point right now. He's still in a launch block. We've talked about your uh, offer to uh, uh, pick up some extra tasks at the end of this. I think that uh, with what we have left and cleanup, we're probably about 30 minutes or so ahead. You offered the uh, uh, brace beams. Uh, we were also thinking of a possibility, since they're working on launch locks, and they're kind of in that mode, in that location, that they could maybe pick up two more launch locks. I know we don't have room for them in the, in the bag as far as the uh, inserts, but we can either leave those uh, tethered out and pick them up on EBA2 or bring them in uh, another way. Uh, but what i really like to do is let JR weigh in on this, see if he's got any thoughts on it. Copy, we're standing by for JR's input. What happened to the third option? Yeah, and of course the other option, since we got out uh, an hour late, is to bring them in and this day has been quite a success, and we've still got a little bit more to do just on this timeline.
line and uh, be ready to go for EDA 2. And from Houston, of course, that's your call. Well, things we could do, Pat, is we could pick up some of those uh, yeah, tasks like the, uh, the SVS target, the, uh, the pit pin for the MT stops, uh, that kind of thing on the way back. That's another option we could look at. That sounds like a good idea, Joe. Why don't we uh, Why don't we do that? Why don't we finish this EVA as written? And we know that sets us up for the choreography that we have on the EVA two, and we can pick really up uh, for the EPRS stop. Uh, so we'll plan on doing that. It sounds like a uh, an option. Okay, we can do that. That'd be easy stuff, and we can just go to our. Uh so we picked them up, which ought to be about all right. Okay, break Houston. I think that's what we're going to do if you follow that, and we'll work the timing out as we see when they finish with the pole. It takes uh, zero a few minutes to pack that bag up, and we'll uh, either send Danny to start on them or uh, JR. Brew, we copy, uh, sorry, Pat, we copied standby one. Pat, Danny, first vote for cover 1760 to complete. Copy. for the uh, bolt reinstallation top. Alpha one. Okay. Clockwise two. Houston Atlantis Big Loop for EVA. Go ahead, Houston, we're listening. Pat, we were just reviewing to make sure we understood all the different uh, possibles that you guys were talking about. Um, we like the SVS target. That sounds uh, like a good one. Uh, we wanted to point out that uh, we don't want you to rotate the tether stop since you don't have the ETRS uh, with you to install. Uh, we are good with the pit pin on S3 MT stop, but we cannot, you cannot rotate the S1 MT stop. Roger. Yep, I didn't think about that. And we copy all that, Megan, and I think uh, we've done a little more talking up here, and that's what we'll do up as written, and then uh, we'll probably bring that target in and pull that in. And 
Okay, Pat, you're a little bit broken there at the end, but it sounds like you're going to um, do all your scheduled tasks, get the SVS target, pull the PIP pin on the S3MT stop, and then head inside. Is that correct? That is correct. Okay, we think we're caught up with you. Thanks, uh, thanks very much. This is Mission Control Houston, uh, now just over five hours in this spacewalk for Jim Riley and Danny Olivas, a conversation with the folks on the shuttle station complex, including the two spacewalkers, about the plan for the rest of the spacewalk. Um, there were discussions of several different get-ahead tasks that the crew might uh, launch into since they have some additional time in their consumables of their spacesuits. The uh, spacewalk started a little bit late uh, at 3.02 uh, p.m. Central Time, but the two spacewalkers have made up the time by completing their tasks assigned a little bit early. Uh, they're in their final task right now, removing the launch locks for the solar array rotary joints. Two of those long chalks scheduled to be removed today and two more on the following spacewalk on Wednesday by uh, Pat Forrester and Steve Swanson. After considering the options, uh, J.R. Riley uh, indicated that uh, he felt uh, the smarter course of action was to go ahead and finish the spacewalk pretty much as planned. On the way back to the hatch of the Quest airlock module, they will stop by and take care of a couple of 10-minute tasks. One of those is removing a space vision system target. Uh, you can see some of those targets here in this picture, the, uh, the white circles with the black circle dots right in the middle of them. And uh, also to remove uh, one of the pit pins that's restraining uh, trans uh, Relation along the uh, truss structures or rail car route uh, by the mail mobile transporter. Uh, the team agreed that that's probably the uh, maximum number of uh, get ahead tasks they want to try and accomplish as they uh, head for the head for the hatch, and uh, that'll allow the uh, second spacewalk uh, to uh, begin as planned. Meanwhile, uh, during today's uh, post-mission management team briefing, uh, mission management team chairman John Shannon of the Space Shuttle Program announcing that uh, mission managers have decided to extend this mission uh, two additional days to allow a forced spacewalk. Uh, among the tasks uh, to be added in will be some repair work on that uh, insulation blanket on the port side orbital maneuvering system pod. No decision just yet on whether that uh, work will take place on the third spacewalk of the mission on Friday or the uh, fourth spacewalk of the mission next Sunday. 13 and 12, complete. I'll be 13 and 12. But the teams here in Mission Control uh, uh, getting prepared to support that decision by the mission management team. Uh, Sun bolts on 14, 13, and 12 are done. Copy 11, six. is complete.
Uh, cover 10 is complete. And nine is next, Danny. Captain, working on it. This is Mission Control Houston. Uh, this television picture from the helmet camera of Spacewalker Daniel Levis showing uh, in very clear detail the uh, swing arm movement, the swing bolt uh, movement that's necessary to remove uh, these covers that allow access to the launch locks. As he uh, detaches and reattaches a uh, body restraint tether there to the handrail. Now five hours, 11 minutes into today's spacewalk by he and uh, Jim Riley as they have uh, moved smartly through their tasks and uh, completed uh, everything but this last set of uh, release for uh, two of the four launch locks on the solar ray rotary joint. Again, uh, the team uh, in orbit and the team here uh, in mission control had a discussion a few minutes ago about whether or not to try to accomplish any add-on tasks since the spacewalk is uh, running about an hour ahead of schedule. The team has uh, made up the time uh, that the start of the spacewalk was delayed. But after consideration, elected to go ahead and head for the barn here as soon as this final plan task is conducted. They will, on the way back to the Quest airlock, uh, take care of a couple of very short 10-minute tasks. 
uh, removing a space vision system target, one of these uh, black dot targets uh, on the various components of the station that helps allow uh, for robotic arm operators to keep track of exactly where these large elements are as they're being maneuvered around the structure of the station, and also to remove one of the pit pins that is uh, restraining transfer along the rail system of the mobile transporter that runs uh, uh, up and down the truss structure capable of uh, moving the robotic arm and crew members and equipment uh, along the length of the space station's truss. Everything uh, going very well in today's spacewalk uh, and uh, partway through the spacewalk. At 7.40 p.m. Central Time, the team inside the space station uh, initiated the commands that caused the new radiator of the S3, S4 truss structure to deploy. It was fully deployed by 7.49 p.m. Everything worked very well. And the check out of that radiator system, which will be used to reject excess heat from the station, is ongoing by the uh, team in mission control.
other side complete patch. Okay, copy, Danny. I think you've got one more right there under cover 21. Uh, let's see, cover 21 has, uh, yeah, I do have, oh, wait a minute, let me take a look here. Yes, I do have one more to go. So here's what we have left, uh, Danny's complete. We do have the SBS target. Uh -huh. so we've got your cover and uh, packing that bag up. I don't know how it would work with tethers if uh, we had Danny work on that uh, launch lock and that you got the SBS target and then got back over and began to pack the bag, could take the lock from Danny. Uh, when he got it out, he could finish that cover and then head on in. If that timing would work out, I'm not sure how the tethering would work out. Uh, or what we could do is have Danny pick up the uh, SPS target and then head straight back from there. Okay, we can do that. That'd be faster, I think. Yeah, I think that'll put him back pretty quick, but we can do it that way. Uh, yeah, hopefully I won't be too far behind. What do you think, Danny? Okay, either way. Okay. Sounds good. Danny, I'd like for you to go ahead and uh, give me a glove inspection. All right, Danny. And if you can give me a preferred translation route to get to the FBS target so I don't cross over JR's others. Okay, uh, just a reminder, it's right up there by the uh, drag ring kill pin on S3. Okay, copy that. I'm actually thinking that maybe I should go up and over. Stay uh, out of this tether. You know, if you went down on the other side of the light stanchion and then over the top of the utility tray, okay. you could get up there pretty easy. And then back down. All right, I'll do that. How does that sound? Sounds good. And uh, I see that I've got uh, no cuts on the RTV. So I look good. Just a little bit of uh, spray coat. Okay, Danny, great. And if you want to just do a quick tool inventory before you leave that area, make sure you have all your tethers. That's a great idea, Pat. Okay. I have two rats, no pit pins, two rats with pit pins, nice uh, station, tra sorry, sorry, shuttle trash bag, PGT with a rat, BRT with a rat, Adjustable to either wrist. Long waist tether, short waist tether. It's a wire tie. Did I forget anything? I think that's it. Did you mention equipment tethers on the wrist? Uh, yes. Adjustable tethers. Okay.
that, Danny. The Riff VS target is supposed to have uh, four spring motor bolts. That's correct. The other one is missing the spring. You see that there? Uh, can you tilt it down a little bit? No, the other way. I'm sorry. Pitch it back because the shadows are on it. Pitch it back a little bit more for us. Not you, just the target. Just right towards you. Just a little bit more. A little bit more. That one there that's loose. This is Mission Control Houston, now five uh, and one half hours into today's spacewalk by Jim Riley and Danny Olivas as they are completing their final tasks, uh, the uh, removal of the solar array rotary joint lock, launch locks. It's a three-step process on each one of these launch locks. They had to remove a, co a thermal cover, then uh, remove the launch lock, and then reinstall the thermal cover before they could go on to the next. Okay, uh, Danny, once you have that target uh, secured, then uh, you can head on in. Copy that. Meanwhile, Danny will leave us uh, taking care of uh, one get-ahead task that was agreed to by the crew and the folks on the ground. That was removing a space vision system target uh, from the exterior there. That's one of those uh, white disks with a black center dot that's used to help orient large structural pieces. You can see it right now in his helmet camera. Uh, that uh, target uh, in the lower left-hand corner of your screen. And uh, with that, Olivas is complete with his tasks outside the space station, and he's going to start heading uh, for the airlock, the Quest airlock, uh, that uh, he and Jim Riley will uh, conclude their spacewalk in.
Perfeita. I've got uh, four reds, two adjustables, a TGT with a red, two ice cutters, two wire ties. Okay, JR, trash bag in there. Yes, sir. All right, your next list to uh, go ahead and uh, pack up this bag. That bag packed up to include the digital camera. I know it's still in there. I see it. Yeah. Okay, Pat Danny, I have my long waist tether attached to the airlock D-ring on the inside, and it is locked, black on black. This time I'm going to go ahead and drop out my waist tether, the safety tether, 85 foot one, on the outboard most handrail, or outboard most location on the, the compressional handrail. Sounds like a good idea, and just make sure that the wheel is unlocked. You got it. Go ahead, Brew. Uh, we're a bit ratty, but we'll try it. Hey, Kevin, why are you just clarifying that we got this morning? This morning, exercise restrictions. Now that the uh, shuttle crew is uh, winding up the EVA, I uh, just want to verify that exercise is permitted at this time. Okay, yeah, Brew, I think the answer is you're okay for exercise, but we're just double checking with everybody. Stand by one. Thank you. Stand by.
This is Mission Control Houston. Uh, we're switching over from the view of Jim Riley's uh, helmet camera, uh, looking at uh, his task with the solar array rotary joint uh, launch locks. Uh, over now to uh, Danny Olivas as he uh, begins to re-enter the uh, crew module of the Quest airlock. That uh, crew lock is the smaller volume that uh, is used by the spacewalkers to uh, exit and uh, re-enter the International Space Station on spacewalks uh, for International Space Station assembly. Outboard dust location forward on the circumferential handrail, and I can verify lock on black is locked. And it is un in the unlocked position. And I copy. Uh, tethers locked, the reels unlocked. That's a good copy. I'm going to go and hop on in the airlock now. Okay, just to give you an update, uh, JR is just back in the bag up right now. Okay. Danny Olivas uh, preparing to uh, tether himself uh, inside the airlock and uh, then begin hooking up his umbilicals so he can uh, begin uh, going off of his uh, backpack supplies of uh, oxygen and cooling water and hooking them up to the uh, internal space station supplies again. Now five hours and uh, 45 minutes into today's spacewalk by uh, Olivas and Riley. The crew, uh, along with their space station uh, colleagues, uh, deciding uh, not to go ahead with any uh, of the more lengthy get-ahead tasks available to them to wrap this spacewalk up uh, pretty much on time since they got out the door a little bit late due to some control moment gyroscope issues that uh, affected the ability of the station to control the orientation relative to the Earth. Atlantis Houston, air to ground two. A little ready come here. Just wanted to uh, let you know that exercise is permitted now. No constraints. Today's spacewalk uh, beginning at 3.02 p.m. Central Time, about an hour later than it had been planned. The crew uh, left the airlock at 8.12 p.m. Central Time and began work the, with their first task, which was uh, connecting cables associated with the connections from the S-1 to the S-3. Uh, nader portion of the connections uh, at 3.27 p.m. 20 minutes later, they were ready to begin releasing the solar array blanket box restraints. At 4.02 p.m. Central Time, uh, they uh, removed the uh, computer shroud from the S3's uh, multiplexer, D multiplexer computer. At uh, 4.32 p.m., uh, they connected the uh, Zenith electrical cables connecting the S1 to the S3 truss structure. At 5.06, they uh, rotated the keel pin uh, that uh, had been used to uh, keep the truss structure securely in uh, place in the payload bay. And then at 5.32 p.m. Central, they released the solar panel gimbal assembly. Radiator assembly locks were uh, released at 5.47 p.m. Central. And then the uh, forward solar array blanket box was unstowed at 6.12, followed by the aft solar array blanket box five minutes later. Two crew members installed the uh, rotary joint drive motor at 6.32 p.m., rigidized some internal truss braces about 7 o'clock, and then uh, moved on to uh, removing the uh, rotary joint launch locks. Right now, uh, with Daniel Levis finished with his portion of the launch lock uh, task, he's back in the airlock, uh, and Jim Riley is finishing up with uh, the stowage of the last of the launch locks associated with the solar array rotary joint that allows it to rotate and track the sun.
Atlantis Houston for EVA. Go ahead, Houston for EVA. Pat, just a heads up, you might be tracking it as well, but uh, we see the airlock thermal cover open for about 10 minutes, which means another 20 minutes and it will need to be closed. And we probably make it. Thanks for that heads up. Hopefully I'll be finished wrestling with this thing before that. ISS Houston, space to ground two, has been returned to normal ops. ISS copies, thanks, Megan.
Houston ISS on two four BME. Go ahead, Clay. Yeah, Megan, I was just uh, horsing around on the SSC uh, looking at, you know, various stuff, trying to figure out if I remembered anything. And uh, for the crew uh, web page, um, I see a place for Sonny, Fielder, and Oleg, but I don't see anything for me yet, and I just kind of wondered when that was expected to happen. Clay, we'll look into it. We'll get you an answer. Okay, and uh, check over the Odin console. If, uh, if Emery's there, make sure he's uh, awake for me, will you? He looks awake. Copy. Thanks, Megan. I got it. Got six launch locks in there. Got the two uh, restraints. The uh, cameras on the outside. The large trash bag. And a red. Okay, JR. Nice job. We saw all that. Okay, I'm on the way back. This is uh, Mission Control Houston. Uh, that signals the beginning of the end of this spacewalk. So far, just under six hours in duration of a planned six and a half hour spacewalk. Jim Riley reporting that he has all of his uh, launch locks and associate equipment uh, packed away in the uh, return bags that uh, they're intended to be in and is heading back toward the airlock where he has uh, fellow spacewalker Danny Olivas awaiting his return so that they can close the hatch and begin repress and conclude the spacewalk. Again, today's spacewalk began at uh, 3.02 p.m., a little later than had been planned due to uh, some adjustments needed with the uh, space station's uh, attitude control system uh, as a result of all the large mass on the end of the robotic arm being moved about to position it for installation on the end of the truss. Uh, the uh, attitude controls, uh, control moment gyroscopes uh, couldn't keep up, and uh, we lost attitude control temporarily using that uh, electronic system of flywheels. Took uh, space station flight controllers a while to get uh, attitude control restored, and uh, after they did that, they were able to get the spacewalkers out the door. But. Uh, Riley and Olivas managed to make up all the time that they'd gotten behind, and they're actually getting ready to re-enter the hatch at about the same time they were scheduled to be re-entering the hatch. Shuttle Station Complex continues to orbit the Earth at an altitude of 214 statute miles. Uh, just finishing up a southeasterly swing over the African continent, uh, just over the southern tip of the island of Madagascar. You may want to get the uh, S3 target uh, tethered in place, and the first thing you'll do is receive that uh, medium ORU bag. Okay, Captain, that. I'll do that. Spacewalkers had some opportunities to uh, add some uh, more lengthy get-ahead tasks, but elected to go ahead and finish the spacewalk pretty much on schedule. Uh, that would allow them to uh, support a uh, EVA-2 by Pat Forrester and uh, Steve Swanson. Pretty much according to the planned timeline, so that there won't have to be a lot of adjustments on Wednesday when the second spacewalk kicks off. Danny Levis did remove one of the space vision system targets on the outside of the trash to bring it inside, so it'll be out of the way of the mobile transporter car system. But otherwise, uh, the crew pretty much uh, came in at the end of its uh, scheduled tasks.
This is a view of the uh, crew lock portion of the Quest airlock module. Again, Danny will leave us already inside the airlock, getting uh, connected up to the umbilicals. It'll provide, provide him with uh, power and air and cooling water from the space station's airlock systems instead of his uh, instead of a spacesuit backpack. And here's a view of uh, Jim Riley as he uh, returns to the Quest airlock module, uh, providing a uh, package full of uh, launch uh, lock restraints to Daniel Levis. We'll take him inside the airlock. Oh, hold on. Not quite loose. Now, six hours and uh, just under two minutes into this spacewalk. Okay. Chair, your next is to attach a waist tether to the airlock D ring and verify that it's locked. Yes, sir. On the D ring set, I'm going to disconnect 85, and it is on the forward circumferential handrail. I see it. That's where I'll pick it up on E2. If you'll check that the reel's unlocked, it should be. It is. Okay. You can ingress the airlock. On my way. Danny, you can Danny, be you uh, removing your SU from the storage panel. And Jim Riley uh, re-entering the uh, Quest airlock module. Uh, he and Daniel Levis closing the uh, thermal insulation blanket over the hatch before closing the hatch.
Okay, watch your boat uh, on the uh, SCUs. Take a call. Okay, good work. HR, you can make sure that uh, there's no hardware blocked in the hatch. Go ahead and get the EV hatch handle in pre-close and close and lock the hatch. Atlantis Houston for EVA. Go ahead, Houston for EVA. 
CPA. Pat, can you verify you got JR's uh, tool inventory? Uh, we did not hear it. We had some ready comp. We did it. Uh, we did it when he was out at the bag, and then we also did it in the inventory of the bag. Copy that, Pat. Thanks. And we're going to send you to 20 in the pre refresh cue card. Look at that. All right, Danny, JR. Good talking to you again. Hey. All right, let's start with the uh, waist tethers disconnected from the D rings and attach them to your EMUs. This is Mission Control, Houston Spacewalkers, Jim Riley, and Danny Olivas now uh, secured in the Quest airlock module. Uh, with the hatch closed, uh, beginning the final stages of their uh, EVA as they begin preparations to repressurize the airlock, at which time the EVA will be considered concluded. So far, six hours and uh, 11 minutes into the spacewalk today. Please verify the oxygen EMU one, two valves are open. They are open. Go ahead and turn the power EV one, two, two switches to on. Check for LEDs. Steve Swanson, who's about to make his uh, first spacewalk on Wednesday, uh, assisting with those procedures as the crew uh, works through them in the crew lock portion of the airlock. And on the LED zone. Right, and the volts are between 18 and 19? 18.5 and 18.5. Great. Right, on your DCMs for both, take your power to SCU. Expect uh, an warning tone. All right, now we're on the crew lock repress. Under DCM, take your O2 actuator to press. Press EV1. Copy. Combo to hard line. Hard line. Hey, thanks for the help on the ground, you guys. Our pleasure to help.
This is Mission Control Houston. Uh, we're seeing indications uh, on the International Space Station that the uh, airlock is being repressurized, concluding today's EVA, unofficially uh, concluding the spacewalk at uh, six hours and 15 minutes. Daniel Levis and uh, Jim Riley stepping outside the space station at 3.02 p.m. Central Time and uh, getting back inside the airlock and concluding the spacewalk at 9.17 p.m. Central, concluding all of their uh, planned tasks and a couple of minor get-ahead tasks before coming back in to the International Space Station's Quest airlock. Atlantis Houston, air to ground two for the upcoming hardline audio config. And Kevin, I was just getting ready to call you about that, to go ahead. Okay, yeah, good. Uh, actually, we are going to delete that hardline audio config uh, tonight from the timeline. If you wouldn't mind, uh, write in, though, uh, because this has to be taken care of um, on A7. Yeah, we'll try it again here. Yeah, you can delete that, but uh, in place of it, uh, one step we will need is on A7, we'll need the wireless video heater off, so you might just pencil that in. That's, uh, okay. that's on A7. Okay, Pat, I think I got you back again. Uh, that switch is on A7 for the wireless video here. Yeah, we're going to go ahead and power off the wireless video anyway, and so you said we should go ahead and take the heater OFF off. Yeah, that's a good copy. You can do that now. And uh, also some, uh, some changes to uh, 1.240 uh, for the post EVA. Uh, you can find that or under... Um, MS2 through MS4's uh, line at about the same time, you can just delete steps 37, 38, and 67 of that procedure. Okay, Kevin, I'm looking uh, for that. Uh, so it's procedure 1-240. And can you give me the uh, steps to delete? Yeah, it's uh, it's just the EVA system uh, post EVA uh, procedure, and the steps to delete are 37, 38, and 67. We copy, thanks. ISS Houston on space to ground two. Fyodor, if it's okay with you, we'd like to delay the start of DPC until after the crew lock repress is complete. Okay, no problem. Very much. Thank you.
This is Mission Control Houston, uh, lead EVA officer for the STS-117 mission. Keith Johnson confirms uh, today's spacewalk lasting six hours and 15 minutes. The spacewalker stepping outside the door at 3.02 p.m. Central and re-entering, repressurizing the hatch at 9.17 p.m. Central over the Indian Ocean uh, south of Australia. This uh, brings a total uh, EVA activity for this uh, STS-117 mission to, of course, six hours and 15 minutes. So far, the total International Space Station assembly spacewalks is, stands now at 84 for a total of 515 hours and 20 minutes. There have been 56 total space station-based International Space Station assembly EVAs totaling 327 hours and zero minutes. It was the fourth spacewalk for Jim Riley and the first for Danny Olivas. And those four spacewalkers for Jim Riley now totaling 17 hours and zero minutes. He's got uh, one more scheduled on this mission on uh, Friday. And of course, Danny Olivas uh, with his first spacewalk under his belt now, a total EVA time of six hours and 15 minutes. Again, the spacewalkers uh, accomplished all of the tasks set out for them and a couple of minor get-ahead tasks before re-entering the airlock, uh, stepping outside the uh, space station a little bit later than bit planned, but making up time very well throughout the EVA, performing the initial task to uh, complete the installation of the F3, S4 truss structure and its solar rays and radiators uh, onto the end of the uh, ever-lengthening space station truss. Now that the uh, new truss structure has been install installed onto the International Space Station's structure, Space Station's weight is now 509,000 pounds. Or almost 231,000 kilograms. Midway through the spacewalk, uh, flight controllers in the International Space Station flight control room command with, uh, worked with the crew on board the station to uh, execute the commands, initiating the deployment of the radiator that was uh, part of the S3, S4 truss structure. Uh, that deployment all went very well, and the uh, radiator is currently in the process of being activated and checked out by the team on the ground. 